Hereth follows the writings of the five guys. The tales of Rob, Chris, Denlin, Martin and of Henrik, who all now have passed into legend. For there are many tales of the five guys and of their bravery. But now is not the time for all of them. Now is the time of the tale of Nimbur Kardag, the 18th of February, if it is on a Wednesday, that is. It is a dark day and a dark story, dark as your soul. As many times before, the five guys were sent on another quest, this time for the head of the Witch Queen of the North, Bargardot. It is said that they left the city of Tromsø late in January, in the cover of the night and the ice wind so cold that if naked, your very bones would freeze to ice then shatter like snow. First rode Sir Rob of the Ossis, the only man to fight the dragon of Sydney and yet lived to tell the tale. He was the first to enter the cave of frozen ghouls and look into the mirror of future dreams, revealing to him the birth of his firstborn child and thus revealing the first question which he asked the five guys once back outside. What would you name your first child? Henrik standing beside his trusted polar bear Gunlaug, turned his head around and spoke. I've always been fascinated with old Norse names, especially the ones from Norse mythology. Like, so I guess I'd want to call my first child uh, Brage, after the skaldic god in Norse mythology. Yes, Brage. One is called Bragi. He is renowned for wisdom, and most of all for fluency of speech and skill with words. They rode on, and after several days they reached the shore of Norge and Nurkap. The ferryman sat there in his boat made of children's bones and seal skin. Thus oily fur would keep the water outside where it belonged. He asked them a question as ferrymen often tend to do, and to ensure a safe passage to the other side of the ocean, they had to tell the truth. What is the story of your middle name? He asked them, and they all answered and climbed aboard. Henrik, and the focus remains on him because this is his tale, bid his bear farewell and spoke to the ferryman as they left the shores of Nurkap. Uh, I don't have a middle name, or... Wait, I have like two surnames, uh, Lorenzen Gullbranson. Um, originally it was Gullbranson Lorenzen, but when my mother and father divorced, uh, they changed it, like, turned it around. So yeah, that's my story. Uh, Lorenzen after my father and Gullbranson after my mother. Uh, I, it's their surnames. They they had one each, and now I have two. They were in a void, and every day seemed as long as a lifetime. Until the third day, when they encountered the Jormundag, Midgar Sormen. The sea serpent so big that he was able to surround the earth and grasp his own tail. The world serpent little child of the giantess Angrbotha and the god Loki. Right before the attack, Sir Martin of the Highlands of Scotland asked them all a question of sexual nature, for thus is something which often grasps the corner of Sir Martin's mind. What's your views on one night stands? Henrik sitting in the front of the boat, scouting out over the misty ocean, and whose mind still lingered with his beloved Thomas, who chose to linger in Oslo, shaked his head and said, It's not my thing, really. Enough said. And he said no more.
because from the mist rose a creature he'd only heard about in the creepy tales his grandmother told him before bedtime. Midgar's Orman, Chris, the youngest of them, took up his father's sword and rose towards the serpent. Hi y'all, it's Tuesday, he said, and was swallowed by the snake. But according to New York mythology, you don't die when a serpent swallows you, you go to Disneyland. The four remaining guys fought the serpent, and after several hours, it returned to the depths of the dark ocean once more. And there, they could see Svalbard. The ferryman led them all ashore and sailed away. They sat there then by the ocean and mourn the loss of their friend, but not for long, because he'd probably return next week. And in Svalbard they met a nice fellow called Sir Jack of Blades. He was of the romantic type, and while they were sitting on a Svalbardian pub eating chips, he asked them, do you have a special song for a special someone? Henrik went up and walked to the jukebox. He pushed a button and the familiar sound of Into the West swept across the rooftops. This reminds me of a special friend of mine, Kjersti, he said. Thus he walked outside. The other guys followed him. The vast scenery of Svalbard laid in front of them and Henrik rode out of the stables with a new polar bear, Lausunge. He gazed towards the distant horizon and whispered, Now guys, we've all talked about the things we like. Now tell me, what do you dislike? I'll tell you what I dislike once I've returned with the head of the witch queen. Thus he rode away never to be seen again, at least not until next Wednesday. This is but one of the many tales of the five guys. Stay tuned for the whole story. Maybe some other time we will return and hear more stories of brave Sir Martin, Sir Chris, Sir Henrik, Sir Rob, and Sir Denlin. But for now, I bid thee farewell.